we are going to be talking about the feminine equivalent circuit. Now, oftentimes students say that this is their least favorite part of the class. So in this video, I'm going to go over an algorithmic approach to take any circuit and model it as a feminine equivalent circuit. This is gonna work every time for every circuit. There's no exceptions. But before I get into the approach, first I wanna go over what a feminine equivalent circuit is. In principle, it is a voltage source with a series resistance. And with these two elements, you're able to capture the behavior of a more complicated circuit, such as this one. So once you find the equivalent Thevenin circuit, this voltage source and Thevenin resistance is going to have the same behavior at points A and B that this more complex circuit has at this terminal pair A and B. The ability to model a circuit like this is an incredibly important topic and arguably the most important concept in the class. So now that we've gone over what a Thevenin equivalent circuit is, let's talk about the steps involved in finding the model. The first step is to find the open circuit voltage, and that's just the voltage we see at our point of interest when there's nothing connected. Now, the reason why we want to find the open circuit voltage is because we're trying to model this component right here. And to do that, we don't want to have a voltage drop across that feminine resistance. So one way to ensure that we don't is if there's no current going through that resistor. Then this node we can label V feminine, and this node is V feminine as well because without a current through this resistor, we don't have a voltage drop across it. The next step is to find the input resistance. And this is done the same way as normal, where you apply a test voltage source, and you look at the voltage in and the current in, and you use the definition of resistance to say that R in is going to be equal to V in divided by I in. And when you find that ratio, you now know the Thevenin resistance. Now there's one important detail that's a little different than we've talked about before. And that is that you have to turn off your independent sources. So if we were to try to find our Thevenin here by applying a voltage source, and we say this is V in, and we have some current I in, we're only looking to find this Thevenin resistance. We only want to see this resistor. However, this independent voltage source would interfere. So for that reason, we have to turn off our independent sources. And to do that is pretty easy. For a voltage source, there's a fixed potential difference across the two terminals. So to turn it off, all we have to say is that there's no potential difference between the two terminals. And the component that does that for us is a wire. So to turn off a voltage source, all we have to do is replace that with a wire. Now for a current source, this component says that there's a constant current flowing through that element, and that's what it tells us. So to turn off a current source, we have to replace it with an open circuit. So if you have a current source, you simply remove it from your circuit. Now something incredibly important that's often mistaken is that this is only true for independent sources. So that means that there is a fixed value for voltage or current and it doesn't change. So these elements right here are independent sources. These diamonds are dependent sources and we have to keep these in our circuit because they will contribute to the overall resistance. So once you find the open circuit voltage, the open circuit voltage is equal to the Thevenin voltage, and that can be directly plugged into your model. And the input resistance that you find for your circuit is equal to the Thevenin resistance, and that can also be plugged in directly to your model. And that's all there is to modeling a circuit as a Thevenin equivalent. So now let's get into the example. And the first thing I'm going to do is find the open circuit voltage between points A and B. To start off, I'm going to label my component currents. So I'm going to call this IA, and I'm going to call this IB. And with this, now all my components have currents. My next step is to label my node voltages. So to start, I'm going to call this my ground, and I'm going to call this 100 volts because my 100 volt source is referenced to ground. I'll call this V1, and here I can label this node 5000 I1, and this node I can label Vx, and I'll write that Vx is equal to Vo right here because we have this Vx label that's referenced in our dependent current source, and we also have Vo, which is referenced in the same place. So now that I've labeled my circuit, my next step is to write KCL. And I only have one KCL that I have to write. And it's right at this junction right here. So KCL at V1, we have that I1 is entering the node. And 10 to the negative 3 Vx is also entering the node. And IA is leaving the node. Now my next step is to write the equations for my components. Starting off with my 2.5k resistor, I have that I1 is equal to 100 minus V1 divided by 2.5k, which is 2,500. Now we can say for our 625, we have IA is equal to V1 minus 0, divided by 625. Now we can move on to our next resistor, which is the 4k. Now we can say that 5,000 I1 minus, I'll use the label VX here, divided by 4k is equal to IB. Now we can move on to the 6k, and we can say that IB is equal to Vx minus 0 divided by 6k. 
So now at this point, my variables are i1, ia, ib, vx, and v1. So we have five variables, and I have one, two, three, four, five equations. So that means I have a solvable system of equations. In this video, for the sake of time, I'm going to keep the focus on the circuits, and I'm not going to go through and solve this system of equations by hand. But you can punch this into any system of equations calculator to get your final answer. And in this case, vx, which is equal to vo, is equal to 60 volts. So this is going to be 60 volts. And now we're on to step two, finding our input resistance. And to do that, I have to start my circuit analysis over. So this time, I have to find the input resistance. And to do that, I need to turn off my independent source. So instead of leaving this 100 volts here, I'm going to erase it and replace it with a wire. And at the input of my circuit, I'm going to add a voltage source, and I'm going to give this a value of 1 volt. You can leave this as a variable voltage, like Vtest, or you can assign it any value. And as long as you find that ratio of voltage to current, you'll be able to solve for the input resistance. So now let's begin labeling our component currents. We'll start off with the most important one, I in. And now we can label our currents again. Let's call this I A. And let's call this IB. And now because this is no longer an open circuit, I have to define another current right here. And let's call this IC. So with my currents defined, let's move on to labeling our node voltages. We can call this VA and we can call this 5000 I1 again. Instead of labeling this node VX, I'm gonna call this one volt because of my voltage source. So now we can move on to KCL and we can do our first one right at VA. And here we have I1 entering the node and we have 10 to the negative three VX also entering the node, and that's going to be equal to IA leaving the node. Now we also have one right here, and at node one volt, we have that I in is entering the node, and so is IB, and that's going to be equal to IC leaving the node. Now we can write the equations for our components. Starting with the 2.5K, we have that I1 is equal to zero, because this end of our resistor is now connected to ground, so that's going to be zero, minus, VA divided by 2,500. For the 625, we have IA is equal to VA minus zero divided by 625. For the 4K, I have IB is equal to 5,000 I1 minus one divided by 4,000. And for 6K, I have that IC is equal to one minus zero divided by 6,000. Now we have two more equations to write. The first of which is that Vx is equal to one volt because we have to reference that at our dependent current source. So we can write Vx is equal to one. And the last equation we need is that Rn is equal to one volt, which is our input voltage, divided by In. At this point, we now have a solvable system of equations and you can either solve this by hand or put it into a calculator. I'm going to enter this into a system solver and the result of that is that Rn is equal to 1.5k. So we can go ahead and replace that because Rn is equal to our Thevenin. And this is the Thevenin model for the circuit. And at points A and B, this model is going to have the same behavior as this circuit at points A and B. So for instance, if you were to connect a particular resistance to points A and B on the main circuit, you would find the same voltage and current across it as you would if you connected it to the Thevenin circuit. And this is the answer to the problem. In summary, finding the Thevenin equivalent circuit comes down to two steps. The first is calculating your open circuit voltage, and this is your Thevenin voltage. And the second is finding your input resistance. And again, the most important thing not to forget is to turn off your independent sources, but leave your dependent sources as they are. From there, you can connect a test voltage or test current and solve for the input resistance, and that's going to be your Thevenin resistance. And the same process will work every time without exception. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.